will not fail. Hallelujah. Um, let's get our spirit posture to receive what God has to say on today. I don't know about you, but I just know that God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son that if you just believe that you have everlasting life, I don't care what is coming up again, what came up against you on this week. I believe that every morning that we wake up and when we posture our hearts and tell God yes, and we give him a renewed yes, it regenerates our spirit to realign us back with God. So right where you are, I just want to kind of exhort just a little bit. I just want to kind of exhort and break up the atmosphere just a little bit more. Hallelujah, God, we just bless you on this morning. Father, we thank you for your Shekinah glory. God, we thank you that you woke us up this morning. God, we thank you that you didn't allow the enemy to have his way. God, we thank you that, that you didn't allow the emotional roller coaster that wanted to take our minds to take our minds. Lord, we say thank you on today. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord on today? Hallelujah. I don't hear nobody in the chat. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord on today? Hallelujah. Let's continue to bless the name of our Lord. Continue to bless the name of our God continue to bless him. I'm telling you, when you begin to open up your mouth and bless him, it just does something to your spirit. It just does something to your inner man. Hallelujah. That it has to agree with what God is saying concerning you. Hallelujah. So we welcome you to Sunday morning service. I won't be before you too long, but let's continue to give God praise. I believe that God wants to shift you on this morning. He wants to shift your mind perspective. He wants to shift your soul. Come on, he want to shift you, my God, to get ready for what is getting ready to happen on next year. Hallelujah. Let's begin to glorify God. He gave me a quick word to release into the body of Christ for 2023. Hallelujah. He said, before, as we get into 2023, he said, tell my sons and my daughters to ready for it, ready them Themselves. Tell my sons and daughters to ready themselves to occupy what I have placed in their hands. Hallelujah. Tell them that there is a shifting in kingdoms taking place. What are you talking about, prophetess? I'm glad you asked. That thing that he has placed in your hand, in your spirit to do, to release that vision that he has given you. He said, prepare for the shift because there's going to be a window of opening for you to come in. Hallelujah. And what God is doing, he's realigning his kingdom. Because there is coming a time where it's going to be kingdom versus kingdom. What are you talking about? Kingdom versus kingdom. I'm talking about the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of darkness. Let me say that again. I'm talking about the kingdom of God versus the kingdom of darkness. And God is calling his sons to occupy the things that he has placed in your hands. It is through the things, hallelujah, that we can wage a good warfare for the kingdom of God. What are you talking about? The one that rules the mountain has the voice to speak. Let me say that again. The one that rules the mountain has the voice to speak. What is it that God has given you charge over? What is it that he has told you to birth out that you are still sitting on? My God, what products and services that he has told you to release that you have not released yet? He said, I'm creating an opening for my sons. Because there is a shifting in kingdoms. There's a shifting going on. Let me tell you something. Every so often God opens a window for the people of God to come through. And you want to make sure that you're on the right side. Hallelujah. You want to make sure that you are in alignment with what God is doing. There's a shifting of kingdoms. Proverbs 29.2 says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. God said, I need my sons, hallelujah, to mount the platforms and the positions that I have given unto them to do. I need them because there's going to be a cause and effect, my God. There is going to be a cause and effect when the righteous are in authority. The people rejoice. This is not the time to back down. This is not the time to run 
into a hole. This is not the time to retract on the vision that he has given unto you. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. He's calling his sons. He's calling his sons to occupy. He's calling his sons to take dominion. I'm talking about you under the sound of my voice. He's calling you to take dominion. He's calling you to occupy in this season. Yes. He's calling you to occupy. We can't be scared in this season. We can't be scared next year, y'all. I'm telling you, you want to take advantage of this opening that is coming forth. Now, I'm going to go ahead and get into the word because I know we've been in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've been talking about his ministry. Hallelujah. We've been diving deep on what the ministry of Jesus is. But God gave me a word on today that's going to bless your soul if you receive it with an open arm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus didn't just only move in signs, miracles, and healing. Hallelujah. He also moved in demonstration. He also moved in boldness. Come on. He also moved with a precision. Jesus wasn't scared. Come on. He wasn't a chicken. My God, he was about his father's business. Hallelujah. He was a leader that exemplified the excellency of who God is. He understood the assignment and he executed well. Come on. We're talking about the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We understand that Jesus' ministry was not just about love. He didn't just come to deliver a people. He didn't just come just to heal you or just come on, provide your every need. Hallelujah. He came so that you can be liberated. There is a boldness that comes upon a person when they receive Jesus as their personal Savior because they understand, hallelujah, the kingdom that they have now assigned, attached themselves to. When you accept Jesus into your heart, you've attached yourself to the kingdom of God, the kingdom of life. And where there is light, darkness cannot bear. Hallelujah. Where there is light, there's continued momentum. There's movement. There's progression in the light. And what the enemy will try to do, my God, is back the people of God in a corner. What the enemy is trying to do is dim your light. What the enemy is trying to do is provoke fear upon your life. But I came to tell you, you got the same authority that rose Jesus from the dead. It's living on the inside side of you. My God, you got the same authority that can look into the darkness and speak light because that same power is on the inside of you. He didn't just come just to love on you, but he came to give you boldness. He didn't just come just to heal all of, all of your disease, but he came to confront unrighteousness. He didn't just come, my God, hallelujah, to put food on your tables and shoes on your feet. But he came to take dominion for his father. Hallelujah. What are you doing to take dominion for God? What are you doing so that the kingdom of God can advance in the earth? My God, too many times we go before God with a gimme, gimme attitude. What I need, gimme, gimme, Lord. But what God is requiring for his sons in this season is those that can come and stand before God as a general and say, God, what is it that you need me to do for the kingdom? What is it that you need me to do to progress and push the kingdom agenda in the earth? You were not just brought here just to take up space. The Bible declares in Ephesians chapter 1 that we were with God before the world began. So that means the fact that we are in this side of eternity. We have an assignment, my God, in the earth realm. Our assignment is not just to get married, just to have kids, come on, just to live a good life, hallelujah, just to live once, but we have been given a mandate. There's a need for you why God allowed you to come here. The Bible says we were with him in eternity before God, hallelujah, formed this world. So when I think about that thing, that means I I'm as old as God is. I told God, yes, that I'm going to come down here to fulfill. Hallelujah. Some of y'all don't remember my God. But when God gives you a true revelation of who you are, you understand that you are not of this world. You understand that you have an assignment that's beyond human mind can comprehend. You understand that you've been called for. 
for greatness. You ain't got time for low level things to keep you migrated on earthly things when your father in heaven is calling you to arise to your kingdom mandate. When your father in heaven is calling you to arise to the assignment that he has placed in your belly. But we're too focused on what we can get from God and not focus on what I can do for God, my God, today. Kingdom assignment. The ministry of Jesus Christ, even when he was 12 years old, he had a tenacity about himself. He was even bold enough to tell his mom and dad, can't you see? I'm about my father's business. Oh my God. At 12 years old, he understood the assignment. He understood that he was peculiar. He knew that he had a greater purpose beyond the human mind can even think. Age does not matter. It's when you come into an understanding of who God is and what he has assigned you to do and this is when your life will begin to accelerate like never before we're talking about the ministry of Jesus Christ I'm going to give you some scripture hallelujah too many times my God we're, we're, we're going before God asking God what you can get from him Asking God, come on, God, I need you to give me this. I need you to give me that. Come on, I, I need you to give me a man. I need you to give me a house. I need you to give me a car. I need more money. I need more this, more of that. But God said, what about me? What about what I need? What about I, what I've assigned you to do? What about what I've called you to do? We're getting too occupied with the things of the world. And God is saying, I need my sons. Hallelujah. To arise to the assignment that I have called him. I understand that my assignment is far greater than just being a mother. I understand that my assignment is far greater than being a wife. I understand that my assignment is far greater, hallelujah, than my accolades, my titles, and my status. It's far greater. I understand that I have an agenda to push in the earth. I understand that my mandate that God has given me is beyond human comprehension. So I don't have time to answer to things that are not answering to God's assignment. The Bible says in Matthew 6.33, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Matthew 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything that you need will be added. See, we got this thing backwards. We're seeking stuff and we're not seeking the kingdom. Come on, we got this thing twisted. We're seeking stuff and we're not seeking the kingdom. I believe when you're about God's business, he's going to take care of your business. It don't matter what you're going through. There's nothing that you are going through under the son that has not been seen before that God has not answered before you ain't the first to go through what you're going through you ain't the first to go through the process that you're dealing with there has been many that have come before you that have went through the same thing and I came to submit to you all today will you be about your father's business the ministry of Christ Jesus was about his father's business everything we saw him do he said my father did. I'm doing what my father has already done. What are you doing that God has already done? Oh, What are you demonstrating that what God has shown you in the realm of the spirit? Are you demonstrating what he has shown you? Come on. Jesus was demonstrating what he saw in the spirit. He said, I'm only doing what my father is doing. I'm only doing what my father is showing me. What are you doing with what God has shown you? What are you demonstrating with what God has shown you? Are you sitting back on the sideline complaining, woe is me, woe is my life, but we're missing the assignment of God carelessly because we're so caught up with our human experience that we're missing the mandate of the kingdom. We're so caught up with our human experience that we're missing the agenda that God has called us to do in this earth. Too often we get complacent 
about the movement of God that we allow the devil to wreak havoc in our lives and, and we just sit there and take it where I'm still talking about the ministry of Jesus Jesus ain't just sit there and take it my God Jesus walked with such poise and authority because he understood that he was from a royal priesthood he understood he was from an eternal priesthood the Bible declares that we are royal priesthood and we are a holy nation set apart for God. That is the mindset that I had that I'm a royal priesthood. Hello somebody. I'm not of this world. I'm from a royal lineage. Hallelujah. My priesthood is not from this world but it's from eternal. My priesthood, my God, is not from human mind can comprehend but it is from the realm of where God lives. We're talking about the ministry of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something, as Christians, as men and women of God, we can no longer sit there and allow the enemy to eat our breakfast, our lunch, and our dinner. We cannot just sit there, sit idle, and allow the enemy to think he can just come in there, take what he want to take, eat what he want to eat, and you just sit there and allow it, and then you just start crying, oh God, woe is me, oh God, oh God. Let me tell you something, everybody under the sound of my voice has something they're dealing with. We may not be dealing with the same thing, but there is something that you are dealing with. But can I submit to you that the answer is already embedded inside of you? It's already inside of you. It just seems every time, and I'm, 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 I'm getting to my message because we're in the ministry of Christ Jesus. Jesus was bold and unapologetic. Come on, somebody. He knew how to confront things when it needed to be confronted. We're talking about the ministry of Christ Jesus. What are you allowing to perpetuate in your life that you are not confronting? That you are allowing this thing to keep you idle. You're allowing this thing to keep your ground level. You're allowing this thing to cause you not to answer your mandate. What are you allowing to perpetuate in your bloodline? What are you allowing to perpetuate in this generation? Come on somebody, what are you repeating? Oh Rabbi Shadda, are you repeating some things your mama did? Some things your daddy did? What are you allowing to repeat in your generation? Do you know that you are the generational curse breaker in your family? This is why God called you out of darkness and he placed you in the marvelous light. He called you to be the, the, the repairer of the breach. But if we don't know the power that we carry, we'll sit there and allow the enemy to think he can come in and take what belongs to us. To think he can come in and swallow up our inheritance. But that devil is a liar. I told God I'm not letting the devil swallow up my inheritance. Everything that 10 generations back didn't get to. I'm reclaiming the time of my bloodline and you need to do the same thing it just seems right at the site have you ever just seemed like you were so close to getting into something so close to getting that money so close for that business being birthed and it just seemed like right when you were at the precipice of what God was getting ready to do then opposition met you at the door let me tell you something the ministry of Christ Jesus was all about opposition and Jesus knew how to deal with the opposition Jesus was never scared just because when we read the text it say that Jesus would slip away when the people were trying to come. It's not that he was scared. Come on. He had angels assigned to him that he could have called down in any moment to fight on his behalf, but he understood his assignment. Opposition comes to try to stop and delay you. Opposition comes to try to cause you to repeat the process. I'm still talking about the ministry of Christ Jesus. Jesus did not allow opposition to stop him. Jesus confronted the opposition. We're so grounded in our emotions, we're missing it. God wants us to confront what our generation and time past did not confront. Come on, we're still talking about the ministry of Christ Jesus. Jesus was not scared to confront things we can't be scared to confront. I'm telling you in this season, 
in this time of your life, in this month of November going into December, you're going to have to fight for what God has placed in you to do. You are going to have to fight because unlike Jesus, Jesus grew in the temple. He waxed strong. He grew in the temple. So all he kind of knew was God. His, his parents allowed him to go in the temple. But some of us, unfortunately, were born in families that breach, hallelujah, the line with God that now we, this generation, got to go back and do the cleanup. This is why it seems like the fight is so hard with you. The, Jesus talked about how he leaves and that the prince of the era is coming. But he ain't got nothing on inside of me. He ain't had time to break Jesus, to yoke Jesus to any earthly things. When I tell you Jesus was whole and complete in every area of his life, because he was. But unfortunately, some of us have parents who dabbled and dabbled in witchcraft. Unfortunately, some of us has parents, come on, who breached the line with God and now us, this generation got to be the repairer. And this is why the enemy fights you so hard. This is why he fights you so hard to not answer the mandate of God. This is why he fights you so hard to keep you occupied with what is going around in your world. Keep you swallowed up emotionally. Keep you drained. Keep you confused. You don't know if you're going or coming. That's where he want to keep you. But that devil is a liar. The Bible says a, a double-minded man is unstable in his ways. So I decree and declare that the Spirit of God will regulate your mind. Right now, we bind the spirit of double-mindedness. We come against that spirit. You are not going to be double-minded in this spirit. You know who you are. You know who you are. I'm still in the ministry of Christ Jesus. We're going to have to fight for this next move. We're going to have to fight for what God has placed in us. Jesus knew who he was. He understood the fight that we were going to have to fight. That's why he sent the Holy Spirit. That's why he sealed us with his Holy Spirit. He understood that we could not do it in the flesh. He understood that the opposition was far greater than the flesh. That we needed spirit to fight spirit. Do you understand that you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but you wrestle against principalities, wickedness, and rulers in high places? What am I talking about? You wrestle with things that you can't even see. You wrestle with things that are beyond this world that only God can open up your eyes to show you in the realm of the spirit what you are fighting with. You think you argue with the boss, but what you don't know, you're arguing with a demonic principality that is that final opening in the boss to get to you. You, you think you fighting your mom and your dad, but what you don't understand that there's a spirit behind the scene using them to get to you. Uh -huh. you, you think you're facing financial difficulties, uh, but what you don't understand, the enemy is trying to frustrate you for you to give up. We are fighting things that we can't even see with the natural eye, but only if God opens your eyes to see it. But Jesus understood who he was. If you're taking notes, go ahead and write Matthew 16, Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Facebook, if you're watching on Facebook, it is Matthew 16, verse 18. It says, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell, the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. In the Hebrew translation, the word Hades means unseen world. It means the abode of departed spirits. Huh. So, if we understand that we're fighting us against something that is not seen, how is it that we think we're going to be able to confront opposition in our flesh? We're fighting against spirit. <laughs> we're fighting against entities that you can't see with the naked eye. Only God can open your eyes to it, and Jesus understood what we were, um, what we were going to come against because he said the prince of the world is coming. 
He understood the opposition that we were going to face, but he's already given us power and authority on the inside. But we got to fight for the victory. We can't sit idle and allow the enemy to just come in and do whatever it wants to do in our lives and just sit there and take it. When we have been given all power and authority, if you understood the seat that you sat in, majority of the things that you're dealing with, you would not even deal with it. Come on. You would, you would stand up in who you are and tell the devil to back up. If you understood the seat that you sit in, the Bible declares that we're seated in heavenly places. We're seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Jesus was given the highest seat in heaven, which is right by his father because of him fulfilling his assignment. So if Jesus is seated by his father and Jesus is on the inside of us and it says that we are seated in heavenly places, what does that tell you? You're seated far above that the human mind can even comprehend. Your seat is not of this world. If you understood the authority that you have, if you understood the positioning that you sat in, you would not allow certain things to happen in your life. So again, you're going to have to fight for this thing. You're going to have to fight, come on, for the promises of God concerning your life. You're going to have to fight for that vision he's placed in your belly, come on. You're going to have to fight for to break these generational curses. Although, when we come into Christ, we are a new creature. But however, there are still some perpetuating things that happen that has to be broken that was breached in the bloodline. Yes, we're made new in Christ. Come on, somebody. Yes, we're renewed in Christ. But however, if there is a breach in the bloodline, you're going to have to be the one to stop that perpetuating breach. You're going to have to be the one that rise and repent on behalf of your bloodline. You're going to have to be the one that rise and say, you know what? I'm going to fight for this thing. Devil, you ain't about to have what God has for me. You may have took it away from my mom, my dad, their mom, their dad, and the right generations all past. But as for me, it stops here. You are not going to take another thing from my bloodline. It stops with me. The enemy want to frustrate you. He wants to undermine the things that God has placed in you. Come on, somebody. He wants to undermine the hand of God on you by frustrating your purpose, by making it things feel like it's hopeless, by making you feel that hope is gone, by making you feel that what God said is a lie. He wants to frustrate the very thing that God has called to be a blessing in your life. But you gotta be able to open up your eyes to see what is fighting you behind the scenes. Come on, things don't just happen. Things don't just occur. It takes place in the spirit before so it manifests in the natural. This is why if we're submitted to God before something happens, uh, he will reveal it to you. Uh, before something takes place, uh, he will show it to you so you can arise in your seat of authority and begin to break that thing down. Begin to pull that thing down so you can open up your mouth and say in the name of Jesus, uh, it is not going to happen. Uh, it stops here. He wants to undermine and frustrate you. Mm -hmm. He wants you to feel that you ain't got no hope. That hope is lost in whatever it is that you're dealing with. Everybody ain't dealing with the same thing. Your problem may not be financial, but it may be emotional. Your problem may not be emotional. It may be financial. Come on. Your problem may not be neither of these. It may be psychological. But whatever it is, I want you to know that Jesus has already given you authority over this thing. You got power, come on, to come against the opposition that's trying to take over your life. Life. Jesus knew how to handle opposition because he understood who he was. He understood the authority that he had. He understood, come on, the identity that 
that he had in God. He did not sit back idle and allow the devil to do whatever it is that he pleased to do. He did, uh, he did not allow the devil to come in, hallelujah, and swallow up what God was doing in his life. Psalms 27 verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom shall I dread? When the wicked came up to eat up, when the wicked came upon me to devour my flesh, my enemies and foes stumbled and fell. I came to prophesy to you, Psalms 27, over your life, that everything that has come to devour, hallelujah, your life, everything that came up to eat up your flesh, eat up the substance that God has given you, it's going to stumble and fall. I prophesy that it's going to stumble and fall. So whatever the enemy has tried to swallow up, whether it's psychological, whether it's financial, whether it's mental, it's going to stumble and fall. It is not going to happen. Whether it's your ministry, whether it's your business, or whether it's your family, it has to stumble and fall. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy that the tactics of the enemy is stumbling, it is falling. In the name of Jesus, it is written in the text that it has to stumble and fall because you understand that the Lord is your light and where there is light darkness cannot stand do you know who you are the enemy think he's going to devour you in this season but it's going to stumble and fall come on it has to stumble and fall because you understand come on somebody Jesus was not a patty cake person he ain't just sit back idle when the devil ran upon him come on he knew the authority that he had he knew what he walked in and he was bold enough to speak because he understood that he was a son of God he understood that his place of authority was not of this world Come on, I want you to turn to your virtual neighbor and tell your neighbor it's time to get your fight back. Come on, turn to your virtual neighbor. Come on, hallelujah, Aaron, turn to Mendoza. Come on, her knee, turn to Pastor Francis and tell them I'm getting my fight back. Write it in the chat, I'm getting my fight back. Come on, hallelujah, I'm getting my fight back. I'm getting my mind back. I'm getting my spirit back. I'm getting my emotion back. Come on, because I know who I am. We don't fight, come on, somebody from the valley lower, but we fight from the mountain top. It's time for the sons of God to arise. You are seated so high that the enemy is under your feet. You are seated so high that the enemy is under your feet. Come on, somebody. You are seated so high that the enemy is under your feet. He has given you power to trample over the head of the serpent. He has given you power to trample over the head of the lion. He has given you power to walk over the scorpion and you will not get bitten you will not get hurt because where you seat you see on high your seat is not of this world now your seat is not of this world come on hallelujah I'm as old as God is I was with my father before this world was created that's what the words say come on somebody ain't nothing new under the sun it ain't nothing God ain't seen before it ain't nothing God ain't deal with before your situation ain't new what you going through ain't new the Bible says there's nothing new under the sun you are just the one to deal with it in your bloodline you are just the one that God has called to deal with it but baby there's nothing new under the sun the devil come on play old tricks he used his old tricks to keep people bound. It ain't nothing new he's doing. But if you are wise enough and open up your eyes to know that God has already given you victory. Before you even was born, victory was already your portion. The devil is under your feet. The enemy is under your feet, Facebook. He's, he's under your feet. Ephesians um, chapter 6 verse 12 and those that are taking it you can write it in the chat it says for our struggle is not against flesh and blood I wish you can just move past come on somebody flesh and blood I wish you can just move past come on that person
person that you feel is persecuting you or, or that person that you feel is doing your wrong. I wish you could move past that and understand that you're not wrestling against flesh. But you're wrestling against something that is not seen that's behind the scene. You're wrestling against something that is not seen but behind the scene. You're not going to tell me you got a relationship with God and God don't show you nothing. <laughs> You're not going to tell me that you got a relationship with God and you don't, get, you don't get no dreams, no vision, you don't get nothing. Come on, somebody. There's, God won't leave you in the dark. He's going to show you something. Our fight is not with one another. The enemy will use anybody as a pawn that allows him to use them. From the top to the bottom to the bottom to the top. It don't matter who it is. If we allow the enemy to come in, he's going to come in and do what he do. In the Greek translation, the word struggle, because it says for we struggle not against. The word struggle means wrestling, generally a fight. Hallelujah. A conflict. And then another word, say a contest. This is a contest, y'all. Good versus evil. This is a contest in the flesh to see who can take over. When you read the depiction of the scripture, it says for our struggles. Oh, let me reiterate, the contest <laughs> is not flesh and blood. You got God fighting for you and you got the devil fighting for you. You got God. You, God want to use you and the devil want to use you. It's a contest in the spirit. But those who have an ear to hear know what to answer to and what not to answer to. If you have an ear to hear, you know what is God and what's not God. Come on, somebody. The devil wants you to respond in your flesh. And he wants you to punch that person in the mouth and cuss them out and go off. So you can say, I'm about that life too. But what you don't understand is a contest. It's a contest between God and the fallen ones. It's a contest between God and the devil. Come on. It's a contest to see which bait you gonna bite which bait you're going to bite it's a contest y'all come on God is in the race and the devil is in the race for your soul which bait you gonna bite as long as you live in this body there will always be conflict as long as you live in this body there will always be war but can I submit to you that you have already been given the victory as long as you don't give up. You have already been given the victory as long as you don't give up, Eddie. 1 John 4 and 4 says, now you little children are from God. We're from God. Come on, somebody. He's talking about us. You're from God. I'm from God. Hallelujah. And have overcome them. What is them God is talking about? Come on. What is that them he's talking about? He's talking about the things that you can't even see. The entities that you are fighting that's beyond this world. He's already given you victory to overcome them. Because greater is he that is on the inside of you. The power that you have on the inside of you is not of this world. The power that you have on the inside of you is from the kingdom above. You understand, come on, that you are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation, my God. Your lineage is not of this world. But it's from an eternal priesthood, which is Jesus Christ. He said, I've gave you to power to overcome them. Come on, demons, witches, warlocks, sorcerers, I don't care what they are. You've already been given power to overcome them. And if you understand the seat that you sit in, them witches can come however they come. But you understand that you sit by with God. You reign with God. You ain't of this world. Because greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. Can, let me tell you something. 
Something happened to me the other day and then I'm about done. Something happened to me the other day. I, I went to go drop off my son to my mom. Hallelujah. This is this is how my message, hallelujah, was inspired by what I went through. Sometimes God will let you go through something just to see what you're going to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Just to give you a message behind, hallelujah, what you went through. So I went to go drop my mom off. And if you've been to my mom house, you know she lives within a gated community. My God, and you can't come in unless access has been granted. You can't come in unless your name is already on the list. You can't come in without a pass. So, you know, hallelujah, that day, I think it was Friday, I went to drop off my son to, to, to Pastor Francis. And, and mind you, there was a long, long, long line outside to the street. And I had an event to go to. My God, I didn't have time to waste. My God, so by the time it got my turn, everybody say my turn, I got to the gate, hallelujah, just before I crossed over to come in. My God, just before I crossed over to get into the promised land, there was was an opposite. Come on, there was an agent at the gate trying to derail me. Come on, somebody, hear me in the spirit. There was somebody at the gate that had the authority to let me in or let me leave me out. Let me tell you something. I, I had to pass. My name was on her list, but I don't know for some reason she couldn't find it, and she told me. Come on, um, you're holding up my line. So what I need you to do is, I need you to turn back out and go back in, in line again. Didn't I just tell y'all the line was to the street? I had somewhere to go. I said, ma'am, my name is on the list. Well, we can't find your name. Ma'am, my mom called you and well, she didn't call you in my God. I said, I gotta drop my son off. I got to go. She said, I'm sorry, you're holding up my line. I need you to turn back around and get a line, baby. Let me tell you something. Hallelujah. Prophetess is saved, but prophetess is hood at the same time. Hallelujah. I'm saved, but I can be hood at the same time. Hallelujah. The Bible says, my God, the kingdom suffered violence, but you got to sometime take it by force. She said, I'm going to open the gate so you can come back around and stand back in line, baby. When that gate was open, I gunned it to my mom's house. Let me say that again. Don't try this at home. But when the gate of opportunity became open, I gunned it to my mom's house. I was not turning back around. I was not getting back in line. I was not about to start this process all over again because I waited my turn long enough. I've already went through the process. And this is what the enemy tries to do. Just when you are getting ready to cross over, he got somebody at the gate to, to oppose your advancement, to oppose your progression, to oppose your next place in God. And sometimes uh, you gotta get hood and say, you know what? I'm going to gun it. I'm going to go for it. I'm not going to allow this thing to stop me because there is something that God has promised me and I'm not about to allow a gatekeeper from the devil keep me out of what God has promised me. So y'all, I, I drove inside. I, I, ain't, I didn't turn back around. No, I didn't go back out because I waited long enough. Hallelujah. I didn't turn back out to go to the street. I gunned it right to my mom's house. And I said, here you go, mom. The lady tried to make me turn back around. But baby, what she didn't know, I was about that life. And I hit that gas and I went straight for home. I went straight to her house. Some of y'all got to be like that in the spirit. Some of y'all already at the precipice of something. And it's like the devil's playing teeter tatter. It's like you get so close just to get shot 10 feet back. You get so close just to get pushed back. Come on, somebody. You've already went through that process. You just you get close enough, just saw the door to close in your face. Come on, you gotta be about that life and fight. How do you fight? I'm glad you asked, Prophetess. Well, I'm proud for this. I'm glad y'all asked. I'm going to answer it right now. I'm going to give y'all three strategies. So you don't become a victim to opposition, but that you walk over opposition. Yes, um, Minister Ernie, bulldoze that door down. Amen. Listen, I was known for a bulldozer, honey. I wasn't taking no for an answer. Everybody that know me back then know me now. I don't take no for an answer. No, no, no. So, number one, you got to commit your life to fasting. And you got to put your flesh on the altar. If we're going to say 
that we are sons of God. Come on, somebody. If we're going to say that we're sons of God, we have to put our flesh in the altar. You ain't commanding nothing in your flesh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you, you can't take authority over anything in your flesh, but it's only in the realm of the spirit. So you're going to have to put your flesh in the altar. What does that mean? When I put my flesh in the altar, when somebody cut me off while I'm driving and stick me the bird, in my flesh I want to stick it back. But you know what? I have to fly up and not respond. Because the enemy wants, let me tell y'all, if we understand this, we'll be very cautious on how we respond to opposition, how we respond to people, places, and things that try to come for us. Remember I said it's a contest, the word struggle. When you break down the word, it means a contest. It's a contest to get you out of position. It's a contest to get you to, to, to forfeit what God is doing. John 14, John 14, 30 says, and you can write that scripture because it goes with the, um, the um, first point that I gave you, which is committing your life to fasting and putting your flesh in the altar. John 14, 30 says, and now I have told you before it happened so that when it does, you will believe. I will not speak with you much longer for the prince of the world is coming and he has no claim in me. So why did I use this scripture? I'm glad you asked. When you put your flesh in the altar, you, you, you allow God to do surgery on the inside of you. You allow God to clean you out because there are things inside of us. If we don't allow God to deal with it, the enemy will use it to deal with us. Let me say that again. If we don't put our flesh in the altar, if we don't commit to a life of fasting so that God can deal with the things that are embedded in our soul, the enemy will use it. To come up against you. So we have to commit to a life of fasting. So that the enemy don't have anything in us that he can use. Come on somebody. Against us. The enemy looks for an opening to try to, over, to come in. But a lifestyle of fasting and prayer will help you overcome. Come on. Help you overcome. During the times of opposition. Come on, a lifestyle of fasting gives you power and strength to arise in your spirit. I'm almost done. Number two, commit to spending time in God's word. Come on, this is how we're going to overcome opposition. I'm still talking about the ministry of Christ Jesus because Jesus was the word. He was full of God's word. He was the word made manifest. Matthew 4 Verse 1 through 4 says, And Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And after fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter, I'm in verse number 3 now. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. But Jesus, I'm in verse 4 now. But Jesus answered and says, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. If we're going to, come on, fight the opposer, we got to be full of the word of God. If we're going to walk into the ministry of Christ Jesus, we got to be full of the word of God. If we're going to take back what the devil has stolen from us we gotta know what he's took and we gotta know how to use the word of God to take it back come on the enemy is betting on you not to get knowledge you ever say my people perish because of lack of knowledge you don't have a knowledge of God's word you ain't got a knowledge of who God is you don't got a knowledge of the things that he done in time past over 2,000 years ago you ain't got a knowledge of what he's done already under the sun this is why we walk around so defeated because we don't have a knowledge of who God is if we get into the word of God and see what God has already done under the sun then you'll understand what you're dealing with is nothing new for God it's nothing new for God. And number three, commit to a life of intercession. There's prayer and there's intercession. When we break those two words, you're entering into a session with God. Come on, to get to, to, to do some transaction in the realm of the spirit. You're entering into a session with God. Come on, somebody. Some of the things that are out of place to come back into place. 
Matthew 20, 21, 13 says that he declared to them, it is written that my house will be a called a house of prayer. Hallelujah, a house of prayer. Hallelujah, but you are making it a den of robbers and thieves. I know when we read the biblical text, we understand when he's talking about the den of robbers and thieves is because people came to sell things in the temple, come on, came to transact in the temple, but that's not the transaction that God wants, hallelujah, You're, when, we, when, we, when we reiterate it to this body, when we don't make our body, when we don't go into commit to a life of intercession, when we have no prayer life, no intercession life, then we allow our body to become a temple of dens of thieves, the enemy come in when he wants to, he steal anything that he wants to, because you are not committed to a life of intercession and prayer. You become a den of thieves. The enemy can come in anytime he wants and steal and take and take and take and take because you have no wall. You have no hedge of prayer. You have no hedge of intercession. Speaking on your behalf. You're just living life any kind of way. Thinking that if you say thank you Jesus ABC and one, two, three, that's it. No baby. You got to build an altar of prayer. An altar of intercession. And that's when you can declare that my house will not be a den of thieves. Devil you can't steal, kill and destroy. You can't come in when you want to. You can't take what God has deposited in me because I know who I am. I'm raised ahead in the spirit. If you think you're going to steal, we're going to fight. We're going to fight. You ain't just going to take it like that. We're going to fight. I hope y'all wrote it down. Number one, again, commit to a life of fasting. And put your flesh in the altar. Commit to spending time with God. Commit to spending time in his word. And commit to a life of intercession. I know sometimes my husband, he'll make fun of me. Because at 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, I'll be rekata rabasho, repatorobo. Because that's the hour. That's the time that God has called me to watch. That's the time that God has called me to wage war against the enemy in his camp. And when God wake me up to pray, baby, I'm pacing the floor. I'm telling the devil, he can't have my family. I'm telling the devil, he can't have my marriage. I'm telling the devil, he can't have my son. I'm telling the devil, he can't have my finances. I'm walking the floor. I'm interceding. I'm speaking my, the mind of God in my house. I'm declaring. I'm prophesying. I'm telling the devil to back up and back up at bay. You can't steal from me. Not here. Not ever. He can try. The weapon will form. But because I live a life with putting my flesh in the altar, because I'm committed to spending time in God's word, because I'm committed to a life of intercession, it will not prosper. It will not prosper. That's all I have for you on today. It will not prosper. It can't prosper. And if you're under the sound of my voice and you would like to, hallelujah, those that are watching through Facebook, rededicate your life back to Christ. Or if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, we'll be glad to bring you into him. Hallelujah. Just repeat these words after me. Say, Father, I repent of my sins, of anything that I may have done, knowingly and unknowingly. Father, Father, I rededicate my life, rededicate my life back, to you. back to you. Father, I accept you into my heart in Jesus' name. So therefore, now you're saved. You rededicate your back. Now, if you were backsliding, you're back in right standing with God because you're repeating these words. Thank you so much for taking time out to um, spend with us during this Sunday hour. The link is in Zoom. Go ahead and give your tithes, your offerings, sow a seed unto this word. Hallelujah. If this word has blessed you in any shape, form, 
Facebook, those that are watching on Facebook, so into this word, hallelujah, the link is also in the um, caption on Facebook, remember you guys, we do have our church and pastoral anniversary, that is coming up this March 26th, hallelujah, it's our third pastoral and church anniversary, we don't just say pastoral, we say church, so it's not just about us, but it's about you too, amen, so save the date, March 26th, 2023. Also, meet us back here on Tuesday again for an hour of power because in Bible study is where champions are made. And also meet us back on Friday for one hour of prayer so we can start the week up charge. All right, I'm your girl, Dr. Prophetess Mandy. Thank you so much for joining us today in House of Love. Go with the peace of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen.